Do you see Thomas back there? <laughs> What's up YouTube? Today we are here in Florida with my family. This is Monty, Nico, Diego and Thomas and there's some more inside. But today we are here with tadpoles. We caught some tadpoles and we're feeding them some lettuce. And they were in this little puddle that was drying up so they weren't going to survive because they the tadpole was really evaporating real fast the tadpole was really evaporating real fast the puddle was evaporating real fast and the tadpoles would have not made it so here we have as many as we could catch and right now they're eating some boiled lettuce Like it. Check out that guy. They're really cool. So our plan is to keep them in here until they become little froglets. Once they start hopping in the dirt, the dirt side, we're going to release them, <clears throat> where they can continue their little life cycle. Welcome back. So it's been a day since I caught the tadpoles. I caught a few more yesterday, um, and today we're gonna feed them some chopped up earthworm. Uh, I figure I'd show you guys how this looks. They're pretty fun to watch eat. So over here we have the chopped up earthworm and I just cut it into a bunch of little pieces. They like to eat a very diet. So I'm just gonna throw them in there. They'll eat that in the next few hours. Run. Basically, I will be giving them mostly boiled lettuce and chopped up insects, um, some egg yolk, I mean egg cooked egg can work sometimes. Um, and these guys will be growing for around 6 to 10 weeks, that's how long usually the tadpoles take to metamorphosize into little froglets. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about the setup. This here is a 10 gallon paludarium and this can work really well for a lot of different animals. We can keep little frogs in their newts. Um, you can keep snakes in here. I used to have my water snake grower in here actually and it works really well for these kind of snakes because they need their little swimming area but also they really need their land area so they can bask and dry up. It's really good for them and especially useful for this species. You can keep garter snakes in here as well. Uh, really a lot of animals can benefit from a kind of more naturalistic environment like this. And we're gonna use them for the tadpoles and it works really well for them because we can keep them in the water side while they're tadpoles and once they become little froglets they'll let us know by moving to the land side and starting to hop around ready for them to be released. So the way we kind of made this setup was by using a glass cut to the specific width of the tank and the height that we wanted to reach. And so we put it together in there by putting silicone on both sides and on the bottom side of the, the panel. And we did this so that we could seal off the water layer, the water side to the dirt side. When it comes to the dirt side, we have three different layers. We have the drainage layer, the drainage barrier, and the actual soil side. And so these three things work really well in bioactive environments. And this, and this case we're not really using it as a bioactive um, environment because we don't really need it they're just tadpoles we're just gonna wait till they grow up and then we're gonna release them but when it when you are using a bioactive setup you want these three things they're very important as you can see here as an example it just rained um, the water would will, will drain from the dirt side into the drainage layer so that the plants that are growing in there if you were keeping plants um, will not die from it becoming like a swamp <laughs> the drainage barrier is important as well because you don't want the drainage layer to to reach the soil and the soil is definitely important for the plants they will need that to grow so when it comes to your drainage layer you can use many things to create it um, you can create you can create it by using gravel you can use rocks from outside in this case we're using a mix of leka balls with shells shells are re really um, available here in Florida so we use them to just give the water a place to go. Last thing I want to point out is that when you're keeping tadpoles 
if it's either to keep them or release them, you make sure that they have a heat source. Uh, in this case, we're in Florida, so the ambient temperature will just keep it controlled at the temperature they need. But if you are inside a cold house or something like that, just put an under tank heater on the side or maybe a heat lamp on the, on the land side. Um, just make sure they have a heat source because it's they are ectotherms. <laughs> And along with that, I made sure to put that, that log right there so that they can climb out once they become froglets. But this is pretty simple setup and it can be a little more tricky if you want it to be, but this is what works. So I hope you really enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and like down below and subscribe if you haven't. I'm gonna try to keep you guys updated on how the tadpoles become frogs. <laughs> And please leave any comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Where'd he go? Where'd she go? Mosquitoes that drink blood are female. <laughs>